Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today we're going to talk about the herpes virus infection. So herpes virus, or HSV, herpes simplex virus, type 1 and 2, is part of a group of viruses called the herpes virus, of which chickenpox is actually a herpes virus as well, treated with similar medications because they're in the same family. So herpes virus is typically associated with cold sore infections and genital herpes. Those are both herpes infections. Uh, herpes type 1, HSV-1, is traditionally cold sore virus, and HSV-2 is traditionally genital infections, but there's about a 20% crossover. So you could have type 2 herpes in your mouth and type 1 herpes in your genitals. When you get a cold sore, it's typically from contact with another person who had a cold sore. So the majority of the population, about 60% of Americans, have herpes type 1 infection in their body. And that was innocently obtained by kissing their Aunt Bertha at a birthday party when they were three years of age. So Aunt Bertha had a cold sore, she gave you a kiss, and she gave you cold sore virus, which now you carry for the rest of your life. Genital herpes obviously contracted through physical contact during intercourse and that is when your partner has herpes infection and gives it to you against your skin. Uh, ironically or scarily, the person who has herpes may actually have never had an outbreak but can be contagious and give you an infection. So asking someone about STDs is not always an assurance that they don't have an STD. Uh, people with infections are contagious whether they have an active outbreak or not. There's a two different ways to check for herpes infection. One would be to do a blood test, and that unfortunately doesn't tell me a lot of information. It is an antibody blood test that tells me if you've had exposures to herpes, but not if you have active infections. And it also does not tell me where your infection is. So as an example, if you have HSV-1, antibodies in your bloodstream. All I can tell you is that you've been exposed to the herpes type 1 infection. It doesn't tell me whether you get cold sores or genital infections or if you have a latent infection that you've never actually had an outbreak. Likewise for type 2, you can get type 2 infection in your mouth. So HSV2 antibody in the bloodstream does not confirm that you have genital herpes. The type of herpes you get is dependent on whatever type of herpes the person who gave it to you has. So if your Aunt Bertha had herpes type 2 in her mouth and she gave you a kiss at your birthday party, then you'd have herpes type 2 in your mouth. If you, as an example, have HSV 1 or 2 in your mouth and you have mouth to genital contact with someone else, whatever type of infection you have in your mouth you're going to give to that person. And likewise, if someone uh, gives you contact, then whatever they have in their mouth may go to your private part. So HSV-1, HSV-2, typically mouth and genitals, and you can remember top to bottom, one and two, but that's not a confirmation. About the only time that that is actually clinically relevant is if you have herpes infection in your genitals and it's type one, Type 1 doesn't like to live in the genitals, and you're much less likely to have an ongoing or recurrent infection. The other way that we test for herpes is if you actually came in with a blister, so you have a cold sore or you have a genital lesion, and we take a little swab and we grow herpes virus, we can determine whether that's type 1 or type 2, and obviously we know where we took the culture from, so that would be location specific, and you know whether it's a cold sore or a private part infection couple of other interesting types of herpes infection, one called herpes gladiatorum, and gladiatorum comes from the word gladiator or fighter, and wrestlers will oftentimes get herpes on their face and on their neck from wrestling, so they'll shave and have a hundred little holes in their skin, and then they wrestle somebody with a cold sore, and the person's cold sore virus actually rubs on their face, and they get a cluster of herpes virus on their neck or on their cheek where they have shaved. You can get it on your arms or other places where your skin is broken. Another one is called herpetic whitlow, and this was originally described in nurses who would change the dressings of people with herpes infection. And if they had a little crack in the skin on their fingertips, they would get herpes in their fingers. So you can get herpes in multiple locations, anywhere where you have broken skin and come in contact with the virus, and that would be herpetic whitlow. The trend today is people tend to shave their private parts. Um, I understand that's the trend. But what happens is when you shave, you likewise have a hundred little holes in your skin, which otherwise should be intact skin. And if you come in contact with the virus, you could get herpes outside of where a condom would protect you. And we're seeing herpes farther away from the genitals because of shaving. 
There's a couple treatments for herpes, Famvir, Valtrex, Acyclovir are all antiviral medications that you can be used. Uh, none of them cure the herpes infection. You always will have it. And what they do is they either, when you get an attack, you can take the medication and it'll decrease the severity and the length of the infection. Uh, they've also been approved for taking them on a chronic basis. So if you get cold sores eight times a year, if you take one of these medications every day, it decreases the frequency of cold sores. And they've recently been approved to be taken as a preventative. So if uh, you have herpes and your partner does not, you can take the medication to decrease the chances of giving the infection to your partner. So be careful. There is no treatment for herpes. Once you have the infection, either as a cold sore or genital lesion, you have it for life. The medications suppress the recurrence of the attacks but do not cure you of the attacks. You can be contagious without actually having active herpes, so they've been able to identify herpes virus in uh, people that don't have an active attack. And you can actually have herpes and have never had an outbreak and give it to somebody else. Be careful. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.